Geiger and Dennis Foreman. How you doing today, guys? Great. Thanks for having us, Dave. No problem. Ste- for having us, Dave. Step up to the mic there, Dave. There <laughs> get get nice and close. Don't be shy. Uh, wanted to talk real quick. I know this is we were talking during the break. Uh, you guys are going to be out there for about a week and a half, and and really a huge expense involved in getting these kids down there. Uh, real quick, Dave, tell us about what's going on today. You got a lot of guys out there doing coin drops and all that kind of stuff, trying to raise a, a couple dollars here to offset some of the costs. Yeah, right now we have a few of our parents uh, with the boys. A couple are over in Summers Point at the T-Mobile. Um, they're going to hit the Tilton Market in Northfield. Then tomorrow, one of the parents, Joe Monteleone from Ocean City, has done a real good job. He's going to have the uh, some of the boys bagging groceries. Oh, actually, really? Yeah, actually. Yeah, put them to work, right? Exactly. Make them earn that right money. <laughs> Plus, right. we're going to be at the Boulevard Liquors over there. What what time is that going to be for that kind of stuff? Um, it's basically going to the bagging is going to be from like ten to one, and the Boulevard Liquors is going to start at ten and go most of the day. Okay, cool. So uh, you're talking Marmora Shop, right? Correct. Down there tomorrow. Yep. And uh, late uh, morning, early afternoon. Yeah, they're going to go like I say about t- probably like ten to one. Um, All right, cool. Get down there, do some shopping, and let those boys go to work for you. <laughs> uh, also, we got uh, t- uh, tonight coming up a big fundraiser out the Wonder Bar from five to ten. Um, talk about that real quick and, and what's going on with that. Uh, that's going to be a, a big uh, event for you guys in terms of raising some funds to get these guys out to Arkansas. Yeah, tonight, like I said, at the Wonder Bar, 5 to 10, we're going to have a lot of Chinese auctions um, along with the Randos family has supplied the group with free food for the whole program, um, discounted drinks. But more oh, wow. important than that, they've given us their whole bar for the five hours on a Saturday night. That's awesome. Uh, we're also going to have a DJ there, Mike Komick, um, who's going to take care of it. So it's going to be a real fun time. And the best part about it yeah. is there's not a fee. We're just looking for donations for the team. Right, so people can just come out, show up, and, and have a good time and, and put some money towards the cause, right? Exactly. Awesome. Outstanding. Uh, Dennis, uh, step up to the mic here real quick and, and tell us about this run this team's been on. Uh, we saw up close the 13-year-olds in the regionals. Uh, they had a nice little run, uh, got eliminated in the quarterfinals. But your guys, the 14-year-olds, um, not a lot of people got to see you play because you were out in Nottingham. Uh, what's been the, the key for this team in, in making it through regionals and getting to the World Series? You know, I think the way the team has come together and really uh, understood the philosophy that uh, both Dave, uh, myself, and uh, Lee Geiger have emphasized throughout the entire uh, time that we've been together for the past couple months, if there was one word uh, I would use to describe it would be uh, aggressiveness. And uh, our base running is uh, is something to really watch. We uh, put a lot of pressure on the defense uh, in all that we do, whether it's bunting, whether it's stealing and bunting, uh, hit and runs, or just looking for a, a solid fastball and, and, and a hitter's count. And uh, our kids have really done a nice job uh, by making the defense work. Uh, secondly, with that being said, um, our pitching and our defense has been extraordinary. I think uh, during the districts, states, and mid-Atlantic regionals, I think we've only had two errors um, on our, by our defense. So our pitchers are just doing a tremendous job of pitching to contact and trusting one another, and uh, some really good things are happening. Outstanding. What, what's been the reaction of the kids? they got to be so thrilled to be going out there to the World Series. I mean, it's, it's kind of a once-in-a-lifetime thing for these guys to be able to go out there to Arkansas and, and try to win a, a national championship. You know, it, it is, and you bring up a good point because uh, these players have all, for the most part, all play on travel teams. Some are on the same team, others, uh, you know, on various teams in South Jersey. So they're accustomed to traveling, you know, in the tri-state area to play in tournaments. Mm-hmm. But what, what this has done is now you're bringing a group of, you know, 14 guys together and uh, with a singular goal. And the goal was established day one. We want to go to Arkansas. And they've really bought into that. You know, they practice hard every time. Every kid shows up. And they're juggling schedules. They're multi-sport athletes. Uh, they're communicating. They're on their way to high school, you know. And uh, they still make sure that they get there. And, you know, you can't really say enough about the parents who have to shuttle them back and forth from work to practice and sit out there and, and uh, completely embrace uh, a new sets of voices from uh, Dave, myself, and Liz. So it's uh, it's really been a credit to them and, and the work that they've put in. 
Yeah, uh, Dave, talk a little bit about the parents. Uh, what's been their reaction to this whole run? It's got to be. It's always tough as a sort of a youth coach to keep all the parents happy. Every kid, every parent wants their kid to be the star of the team and all that stuff. I guess winning cures a lot when you're when you're winning state and regional titles. Everybody's kind of happy. Um, what's been their reaction, and how do you how do you balance all those personalities on the parents' side of things? Um, everybody, like Dennis, used a key word there. Everybody is bought in, and um, that's always been the philosophy that we've approached with the parents, the kids. Um, right now, everybody's on a high. Everybody's going to Arkansas, so the only time people get a little bent out of shape if. Uh, Johnny's not in the game for seven <laughs> innings is right. the best way to look at it. Um, but once the game's over, then they're a team again. Everybody's happy and everybody's yeah. – so everything's blending. Everybody, there's not a – right now, there's everybody is just uh, overexcited. For this. It's got to be kind of a cool thing to see these relationships develop between the parents too. I mean, these are kids who don't necessarily go to the same school, so these parents probably haven't interacted before this summer. And how cool is it to see them come together, become friends – uh, learn more about each other's sons. That's got to be a, a real nice sort of sidebar to this whole thing. Oh yeah, this these what they're doing now is they're making great memories. Is mm-hmm. what it's going to be like. My son Lee, who's uh, who coaches with us, played on A Shore um, ten years ago, right? And he's still friends with those guys that he played on, even though they all went to five different high schools and everything else. So it's you make these memories forever with this, and uh, it'll be the same with this group. Mm-hmm. Right now we have seven kids that are in the mainland sending district, uh, three in the Atlantic City, and four in the Ocean City. Nice. That's how the team breaks down. Uh, we're talking with uh, Dave Geiger and Dennis Foreman, coaches for the Atlantic Shore 14-year-old Babe Ruth team, which is going to be heading to Pine Bluff, Arkansas, next this coming week for the uh, Babe Ruth World Series. Uh, Dennis, we were talking during the break a little bit about how the the success of the Atlantic Shore program the last four or five years has really fed into some great success locally on the high school level. Uh, you know, I wrote about this a lot up in the spring uh, for Glory Days Magazine about how this is really kind of a golden age of baseball, high school baseball around here. And uh, how cool is that to see these kids you coach as 10, 11, 12, 13-year-olds sort of make that next level, become state champions? We saw Mainland last year, Holy Spirit this year, a lot of Atlantic Shore ties to those teams and they both won state championships and have really elevated the level of baseball around here. Yeah, you know, you make a great point, Dave. You know, you, your piece uh, in the July about the emergence of the Cape Atlantic League, I think, can be uh, directly uh, correlated with uh, the emergence of youth sports and the organization that so many uh, dedicated volunteers put in. You know, you look up and down uh, this area uh, and the quality of volunteers that you have. Uh, you know, a, a guy by the name of Ted Corey was so involved, uh, you know, in Northfield in the early 2000s, and then it kind of transitioned. Uh, I was very fortunate fortunate to kind of follow him under the leadership of Jim Leeds and Nick Drobenik. Uh, had the pleasure to coach with Mike Toner mm-hmm. uh, and the late Jim Hoops, who had a lot of influence on the guys who are playing today. You know, Dave was over in Summers Point and then at Linwood. And now all of a sudden, you're seeing the, the rewards of guys who would just run clinics after clinics and be committed to fundamentals and to winning. And, you uh, you know, we had little league teams that went to state championships and 10-year-old teams that won the state of New Jersey and went up to Rhode Island. And now these kids are becoming high school players who either are leading their teams in state championships or now are the next group of superstars of the Cape Atlantic League. And I think that's what we're watching. And, you know, from a volunteer perspective, Dave, I think that's a that's a very rewarding component that, you know, wow – you can actually show somebody what's at the finish line if they put the work in and, and have a great time you know, doing it. Exactly. Uh, Dennis, what, what's, been your, what's your life been like the last six weeks or so? I mean, you're talking, you've got to put a lot of effort, a lot of time into this, you know, aside from working full-time and your own family and all that stuff. Uh, how, is it draining mentally for a coach when you have these summer teams that really progress deep into state, regional, national tournaments? It, it, it can be. Uh, there's a certain so, uh, sense of uh, enjoyment when you're out there with, with the boys and actually teaching, and they're such sponges, and they're learning, and then they're actually implementing. However, as you mentioned with full-time jobs, you know, I'm very, very fortunate to have a, a dedicated uh, employer in Saint, at St. Augustine Prep, where I've been the director of athletics, and now I'm in, in another administrative capacity, uh, and they've celebrated these kinds of influences that you can have on young people. Um, 
you know, I have a son who played on the 13 year old A Shore team that I did have to miss a lot of the, the you know, his participation. Mm-hmm. Um, but kind of, uh, you know, my wife is very understanding uh, from a standpoint of she knows that I coached so many of these guys when they were growing up, and it's that true sense of giving back. And, you know, you don't make a lot of money doing this, but you do get paid in the currency of the soul for sure. Great words there. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to have to record that, play that on a loop. <laughs> uh, good stuff. What's, what's been the summer like for the kids? Um, how much have you seen them grow Dave, in terms of their baseball ability, their knowledge of the game, it's got to be cool to see these guys learn so much and get so much playing time in a short amount of time where they really develop, you know, almost a whole year's worth of development in in a six to eight week span. Like Dennis mentioned before, a lot of them do travel ball and stuff like that. And then you have your rec league with the um, the Atlantic Shore program. So some of these kids have played 50, 60 games. Then we got a hold of them. And now we had to go and program the way we want them to play. Mm-hmm. And you can definitely see it. And from our day one of practice, we explained to them that we're going we're gonna to run, we're going to bunt, we're going to play defense, we're going to do all the, the key things, and we're going to make this work. And mm-hmm. uh, they've, they've definitely bought in. And if you talk to the kids, I can guarantee every one of them will tell you how much they've improved over the summer with us. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we talked about this yesterday. I, you know, I was asking you about was it a surprise to win this regional championship, and you said no, not really. You know, this was our goal from day one. Exactly. We knew this team had the talent to make it to the World Series. At what point did you see that? Was it after a couple of practices? Did you know what kind of talent you had? Actually, I saw it when they were twelve years old. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, no, I'm I'm a little league junkie, pretty much. I I love the game of little league, and I've been watching these kids ever since they were nine, ten years old, coming through the um, the different uh, systems, and you could see when they all are all going to meet at one time, it was going to be a great baseball team. And last year, Mike Gill uh, won the states right. with with um, I think eight wait eight or nine of these guys were with Mike last year. Okay, he lost, we lost a few of them, and. By going and watching their games, knowing what, what wasn't coming back, I knew what I had to go out and get, and I was able to go over and scout other programs and get a few real key additions to our team. Mm-hmm. And it, it's all paid off. And like I said, I knew coming out, I told Dennis from day one, I told the kids from their first practice that we had, it's the World Series, we're going there. It's If you guys buy into what we're taught, we're selling you, we're going to the World Series. And... They started little by little, and then once it's once you got that down loop, uh, like it was like a roller coaster. They <laughs> once they saw, hey, these guys are for real. Yeah. Then everybody bought in, and we flew from there. Outstanding. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back on the other side with more from Dave Geiger and Dennis Foreman. Talk a little bit more about the Atlantic Shore 14 year old Babe Ruth team that's heading to Pine Bluff, Arkansas, for the World Series. So stay with us. Dennis Foreman from the Babe Ruth squad. Uh, Ted Corey just made an appearance in-house in studio. So a lot of in-studio guests here, which is kind of cool, a little bit different for us. But uh, we're going to be talking to Ted about uh, a cool event he's got coming up he's involved with on Monday called the Paddle Out for uh, in memory of uh, some of the boys from mainland who lost their lives in that automobile accident a few years ago. So um, actually, uh, I, I looked on Facebook today. They got a, at least 100 people going, so that's going to be a real cool event out there. On Monday, I'm sure some of these guys will try to get out there if they can uh, from the Babe Ruth squad and support those families. Uh, Dennis, I want to bring you in again real quick and talk about a little bit about the fundraising efforts that are going on. I know it's got to cost a pretty penny to get 14 kids down to um, Arkansas. You're going to be staying, like you said, 10, 12 days down there. What's What's been going on involved in that, and, and how are you guys trying to raise some funds here in the next few days? You, you don't have much time to put this all together. No, you really, we really don't. Uh, we had a parent meeting uh, the day after we won the Mid-Atlantic Regional over at uh, the Bonchek family's house, one of the players. Uh, they were very generous to extend their, their home, and all the, all the parents showed up and uh, just tried to start divvying up responsibilities. You know, And it's just what a humbling experience to be involved in a community that is so uh, generous and really understands what Dave's talked about, the experience for young people and the families. So, I mean, I'm not, for me to name everyone would be probably stupid, but I'm going to do it anyway. You know, so, <laughs> sure, you know, go ahead. You know, uh, you know the Bunning Family Pharmacy, uh, you know, Galanti's Bike Shop in Ocean City, uh, 
both Oceanside Gym and Island Gym have been very, very generous uh, to make it happen. Charlie's Bar has, has put together some uh, packages and some great prizes for tonight. Uh, you know, you know, Primo's uh, Pizza and Walled over there. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really fascinating to watch a community come together. And we've seen it, you know, you, you talk about, you know, the tragedy with the mainland boys. And, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, these communities have been brought together through adversity and that's kind of what we deal with in life and hopefully mm-hmm. along the way these these players learn life lessons and and, and they'll be good citizens when they get to that point in their life yeah definitely uh talk a little bit more about what's going on specifically with the boys uh today and tomorrow uh i know i wanted to mention it once again uh, big fundraiser tonight down at the wonder bar in atlantic city from five to ten uh no charge to get in just come by if you get a chance stop by for an hour or two um you know Get get some food and drink. Make make a few donations. You know, twenty five bucks here and there is going to help these guys out. Uh, what are the, what are the boys doing to get involved? Uh, you know, you got some coin drops coming up, that kind of thing. Yeah, thanks, Dave. The the, the boys are out there today uh, in Northfield over at Tilton Market, uh, seeing some friendly faces, uh, and then over in the Shoprite Shopping Center over by T Mobile. Uh, they're there throughout the day, and then tomorrow they'll be over at the Marmora Shoprite, and uh, also Boulevard Super Liquors was very generous of those businesses to allow to allow our guys out there in uniform. And you know, it's really neat also with the younger siblings. Uh, you know, little Maddie Monteleone. <laughs> and Brandon Sharkey and Carly Lashley. They're over at a bike shop in Ocean City every day selling lemonade and at the big old smiles on their faces. Oh, and, that's awesome. Yeah, man. so these are the things that they, they kind of look back on uh, as as part of their youth experience, and it's, it's, it, is, uh, it is fascinating how it all comes together. What, what's been the coolest thing about this whole run? I mean, you, you're talking about spending basically the whole summer with a group of 14-year-old boys and their parents and kind of developing all these relationships and it's got to be great to not only develop those relationships but also to see these boys succeed see them gain confidence as they sort of they're on the, the, the doorstep of varsity baseball yeah and, and you know that you you bring up a great point Dave it's it's the transformative years you know during these high school years that it's so critical and now you have an influence of that and how that's going to start and uh, you know we're very very lucky in this area to have just tremendous coaches uh, and mentors uh, that they're going to experience at the high school level you know Billy Kern uh, is a product of Ashore and, and is very v- much involved in uh, y- you know in, in the uh, development of players uh, you know Craig Messinger over at, at Ocean City uh, Coach Normain over at Holy Spirit, Coach Bylone at St. Augustine Prep, you know, uh, Coach Bean, he mm-hmm. lives in Northfield and does a great job at Atlantic City. So, I mean, you're talking about some great young coaches, uh, and now they have some great players. So that's the rewarding part for Dave and I is that, wow, we actually have a little bit of an influence of how these guys are going to project in high school. And, and that's kind of cool, the relationship. I know all those guys are baseball junkies. I mean, I, you know, I talk to those guys throughout the year, just just talking baseball. Whenever I see them, you know, Coach Co- Coach Kern, Coach Normain, and and it's got to be um, it's got to be great for that program. I think that's part of what the success of Ashore is the the um, involvement of the high school coaches to support these kids, and you know, either, even if they're not going to their particular school, how, how much does that really bring the whole baseball family together when you're talking about uh, Atlantic County? You know, and, and I think you have to you have to really. T- Think about the organization that uh, Bill Rosino has done as the president of Ashore, and I, and I think this was a vision that they've had, you know, a number of years ago, and and uh, and it's continued. Now there's an influence with travel baseball that you know I think there has to we have to look at that closely, and, and you know does it hurt Ashore? You know the fact that it's still staying together is a credit to Billy and his staff uh, of the executive board one that Ted Corey happens to sit, but. Um, you know, it is neat to have a, a Cape Atlantic League uh, family of baseball. The kids have great uh, rivalries with one another, but then they kind of come together at the Carpenter Cup and at the All Star mm-hmm. situations, and they, they do genuinely care about and one another and 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 relish those times at Ashore. And now they look back, you know, as I know the group of guys that just graduated had some great memories with the Ashore run, and they all had success at the high school level. Uh, Dave, going to talk to Dave Geiger real real quick, uh, head coach of the Atlantic Shore. 14-year-old Babe Ruth team that's going to the World Series. Uh, Dave, It's it's got to be exciting for you as a coach. What's going through your mind now? You're a couple days away from uh, you know, packing up the vans, heading down to Arkansas. So it's what's going through your mind as a coach? And, you know, you got any, any jitters coming up yet, or are you just trying to, you know, get everything organized? Nah, basically just keeping it balanced. If I, if I get worried, all I can do is make the kids worry. And <laughs> like I say, we have, love this team. 
It's a great team. They're uh, they're ready to play. We're uh, we practice two to three hours every time we're out there, and from the moment they get there till the moment they leave, it's just a lot of hustle, a lot of work. It's it's been a lot of fun. Is the best way to uh, look at it. Mm-hmm. And Dennis mentioned uh, Billy Rosino there while I was talking in the A Shore board. Um, he, he should get so much credit for everything. The time that this man puts into the A Shore program is amazing, and he's also to run his business and. Like right now, he's over there putting together tonight for us, Mm -hmm. knowing we have the coaching and all the other stuff parts to do. He just really steps up and does anything you need for him. And just like I say, you can't give enough uh, shouts to Billy Rosino. If you're you're just joining us here, we're talking with uh, Dennis Foreman and Dave Geiger, coaches of the Atlantic Shore 14-year-old Babe Ruth team that's heading to Pine Bluff, Arkansas next week for the World Series event. Uh, Dennis, real quick, run through the, the stuff that's going on today and tomorrow in terms of fundraising, trying to get some dollars put together to get these boys down to Arkansas. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I know I'll kind of just re- recap real quick, Dave. Uh, we have some Ventnor and Atlantic City kids now that are up on the boardwalk uh, over by the Tropicana. Uh, we have uh, three of those players that are over there uh, working hard over at Tilton Market in the Northfield, seeing some uh, friendly faces. Uh, the Northfield gang is, is, is hanging out there. And then uh, our uh, Linwood and uh, some of the up Ocean City Upper Township guys are down at the uh, Summers Point Shopping Center over by T-Mobile. Uh, so they'll be hanging out for a couple more hours and uh, appreciate seeing some friendly faces, wishing them well. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be at Marmora ShopRite and also the uh, Boulevard Super Liquor. So, again, thanks to all of, all of the companies and, and, and corporations who have, who have really stepped up and, and, and rallied around this, uh, this trip for these guys. And it's, really, it is a credit to the entire community. And also, we got the, uh, the big fundraiser tonight, a Wonder Bar from 5 to 10 p.m. in Atlantic City. Uh, get out there if you get a chance and support these guys. Uh, they're trying to make a trip of a lifetime here out to Arkansas to, to hopefully bring a national championship back to uh, the Atlantic Shore and the Jersey Shore area. Uh, thanks for coming in, guys. I appreciate you taking some time out of your day to fill us in on what's going on, and uh, good luck down there in Arkansas. Thanks so much, Dave, and thanks to uh, 97.3 ESPN for uh, the continued support. No problem. Good luck down there in Arkansas, guys. Thanks we're going to take a, a quick break, and we're going to bring in uh, Ted Corey to finish out the show and talk about a pretty cool event that's coming up on Monday night. So stay with us for the next few minutes here, and we'll wrap things up on the South Jersey Sports Report.